the idea of the presence of men in our society has not been one which really occupies our minds. And I have been in genuine search for the answer to this question, where are our men? And in dealing with today's theme, I think that we have a very golden opportunity to step in and firstly identify what is a man or the concept of a man and then identifying where they are and where we can find them and how we can find them. The first thing in identifying a man, I think, is identifying the characteristics of what we expect a man to be and then locating that in the conversation of what men currently experience. Men are expected to be providers, strong, independent, but men in that environment of 80% dominance of a female environment are now earning less than women, are now employed less than women are, and suffer a degree of emasculation that can be ego bruising. And that emasculation finds itself in an abhorrent way in violence. Violence born out of inequality. Because there's an expectation of the man doing all of this and then an incapability of the man meeting that standard because we just don't have them in societal involvement, in employment, in structure the way we did before. So in locating the man, I think the first thing that we ought to do on a day such as today is to embrace the fact that men are just men. I genuinely believe that the real success to being a man is in being a renaissance man. A renaissance man, taken in its simplest form, is a man that is generally all-rounded. An all-rounded man isn't necessarily the guy that comes first in class. Because we celebrate our successes far too much and we don't celebrate our failures enough. Our failures are the things that help us to grow the fastest. I'll put it into an example. When you were at high school or when you engage in an exam at university, what you remember most is the question you got wrong. As you walk out the room and you make the mistake to talk to the guy next to you and say, hey, what you did on question 21, that sinking feeling comes over you and say, oh God, I didn't put that. You certainly don't remember the hundreds of them that you got right, but you remember the one you got wrong. And I say all the time, that is the best example of remembering that your failures help you the most which is why I go back to my 11 out of 100 in ad maths. One of the best examples in my life was that experience and managing that episode of trying to catch up with something that I couldn't grasp immediately. And when we get into the Renaissance man, accepting failure as a learning tool is a beautiful thing. The other side of the Renaissance man is in understanding that you can be multifaceted in a number of areas. You really ought to have an equal portion and balance between your spirituality, your physical development and sustenance, your contribution to society, your pursuit of wealth, your pursuit of happiness, and your pursuit of family. The other thing that I'd like to really focus upon in that identification of man, the phenomenon of where we are, and how we find them, which is where we are right now. So we're finding them in our schools, we're finding them through engagement, is to really call upon men to be reinvolved in society. I do think that the easiest approach to that is again through the alumni of your schools. Because there is an immediate association and fabric of knowing where you came from and re-engaging. And I really do believe that if each of us went back to where we came from, went back to the schools that we were involved in and that made us who we are, I think we'd genuinely be engaging in a purpose because fathering 
and manliness and manhood really can be taught in a pack. 